I'm wondering, when the president went and flew over Lafitte, did they fly over Ironton to see the damage back over here with all that water? Because we was flooded out then. Well, forgotten by the government, that's how people in the town of Ironton describe their post-Ida recovery. The small, predominantly African-American town sits on the west bank of Plaquemines Parish along Highway 23, nestled between Myrtle Grove and Bell Chase. It is a story you'll see only on 6 WDSU's Shea O'Connor live to tell us the storm is bringing light to decades-long fight with leaders regarding their infrastructure development. Shay. That's right, Stella and Gina. Now, the people of Ironton, well, of all of the towns that I've actually traveled to in the wake of Ida, we'll start with that. Ironton may have been the worst devastation that I've seen. Now, the people there in Ironton, just like every other town here in the state of Louisiana, very resilient. They tell me even with the damage, they plan to rebuild. Home of Lafitte, Thibodeau. I've heard all of the places except for Ironton. This is a little black community. Everybody back here been here for years and nobody thinks about us. Just beyond Highway 23 within Plaquemines Parish lies the small town of Ironton, completely crippled by Hurricane Ida. Pearl Silve has been staying in the predominantly African-American town her whole life, living to tell about Betsy, Camille, Katrina, and now Ida. Go and then come back, you have something to come back to. But this time you have nothing to really come back to. Sylv says she evacuated just before the storm. Now coming back to her home that was once on the right side of the street, but now in her neighbor's front yard. The town easily caught about 10 to 15 feet of water in homes. My house floated from Johnson's side of the street to Glenda Green's house. That's Glenda's house. Most of Pearl's neighbors are relatives, all losing everything in just a matter of a day. The cemetery where many of her family members rest, also disturbed during Hurricane Ida's wrath. My grandbaby's little tomb, it's still intact as far as I could see. My mother's tomb, it's still there. My grandfather's tomb, it's still there, but and I don't know the damage. I had the same... Um, Damage done during uh, Zeta, so I had decided to just do the same. Other community members say they're tired of rebuilding, but the town has strong roots. I was born and raised right here. I grew up here. This is in in my blood right here. Iron in my blood, so I'm going to give it one more try. The hope for all is help from government officials. That means a renewed levy system and assistance with rebuilding. That levy should have been fixed years ago. The government gave money for that and they refused to have done it. And they refused to do their jobs. Now I did speak with the Plaquemines Parish President Kirk Lapine. He tells me that the levee system surrounding that area is about three to six feet. The storm surge from Ida was about 10 to 15 feet. So the, the levees definitely breached. Now, when it comes to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I'm actually told that they have been working to heighten the levees for years now, and that work has yet to be completed. We will continue to follow this story, but for now, just reporting live, Shay O'Connor, WDSU News.